Hi everyone, I'm Michai here. In today's video, we're going to take a look at what the process of breaking down a complicated scenario can look like. Okay, so what I did as part of preparing for this series is I imagined some real application that I can imagine existing one day. And I worked my way back into actually modeling the domain and different processes. And that's what I want us to do today. So if you've been following my series of building a REST API completely from scratch, following clean architecture and domain driven design principles, then you're familiar with this mock over here. In the first video, I told you that we're designing a dinner hosting platform. And how I imagined it when I just started out is me as a host, I can create dinners, I can set the price, describe the menu that's going to be, and then people can scroll exactly like Airbnb, find the dinner that they're interested in, reserve a spot in the dinner for themselves or plus as many people as they want, and the payment and everything happens through the application so that we can take a cut. This is an application that I can totally imagine existing for real by Uber or Airbnb or some other company simply taking this concept and applying it. Now, my application is almost complete. So if you're interested in buying it, then you know how to reach me. Okay, so let's imagine that you as a software engineer or an architect, you have an application like this. How do you start modeling such a thing? How do you even understand what the different flow is? Okay, so in the last video, we looked at event storming. If you haven't watched it, then I'll link it over here. I highly recommend for you to watch it. It gives an overview of event storming and why it's such a powerful tool. Okay, so what I have on the screen is our modeling surface. Here, we're going to lay out the flow of our application. And what I want to do is process modeling. So like we said in process modeling, you start with some events for context. So let's say that some context is that the user already registered and also that the user was approved as host. Okay, so let's imagine very similar to Airbnb where basically you sign up to the platform and then by default, you're just a guest. You can browse the different dinners and reserve and so on. But if you want to be a host, then you need to go through some process, obviously, because we're talking about food and people's houses, you need to be approved to actually be a host. So for context, let's say that these two already exist. Okay. And the first command that our process modeling is starting with is the create dinner command. This is done obviously by the host. So let's say that the actor here is the host and the last event that we're aiming towards is let's say that the dinner ended. Okay. Now, because these are interesting events, then let's make it a bit bigger so we can see it also when we zoom out. Same goes for these two. Let's make this a bit bigger as well. Okay. So if you remember from the process modeling video, then basically we start with some command and we want to reach some event. We have rules that we need to follow. They're over here. As we go along, then even if you're not familiar with this, then you'll see what the rules are and how it works. Now, there are a few strategies how to go from the initial command to the last event. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some interesting events in the middle, something just for us to have an easier time to see what we want to reach to. So interesting events that we have are, for example, that the dinner started, right? That's an interesting event. Let's make this also a bit bigger. What else? Let's say that this is over here, right? So this is where the dinner starts. This is where the dinner ends. We also have somewhere here that the guest arrived, right? The guest was billed, but we also have that the guest reserved a spot, right? Okay. So again, the process that we're modeling today is we're starting from the create dinner command and we're ending in the dinner ended event. And we put here some, let's call it pivotal events in the middle events that are a bit more interesting. So we have, for example, that the dinner started somewhere between the start and the end, then the guest arrived and was billed and sometime before the dinner, then the guest actually reserved a spot. Okay. So let's start modeling everything in between. Okay. So let's start. We have the create dinner command. A command is always invoked on some system. In our case, it's the dinner system. Then the command results in a domain event. The domain event is the dinner created event, right? And event always has afterwards either a policy or a read model. So in our case, for now, let's say that this simply returned the, let's say dinner ID, also the dinner details, right? Something like this. So this is basically the information that's returned back to the client. Okay. Now these dinner details are observed by some guest. So let's say over here, we have the guest is the actor and the guest invokes 
the reserve dinner command. A command again is happens on some system. Let's simply copy this system over here. And this can result in one of the followings. So either in that the dinner was reserved, but it could also have failed. So we can say reservation failed. Okay, so if the dinner was reserved successfully, then let's say that the user receives the reservation ID, but also the reservation details, something like this. Okay, now what we want to do at this stage is simply reach the last event, looking at the good flow, at the main flow. So for now, this of course is something that we do care about. But for now, let's put here a hotspot and let's simply say here, I don't know, what should we do, right? There are many things that we can do here. We can maybe suggest a different dinner. There are a few things that we could do, but for now, let's just simply say, what should we do? Okay, so another thing that we might want to have over here is let's say we have the dinner reserve policy. Okay, so let's say when a dinner is reserved, then it makes sense we also want to notify the host that someone reserved to the dinner. So let's say this invokes the command of notify host simply for now. And this is invoked again on some system. Let's say this time we're doing it by email. And this results in the host notified guest reservation event or something like that, which simply has over here, again, let's say something similar to this also arrives to the host by email as well. Okay, so what we have for now is the beginning up until this, right? So this event over here is the dinner reserve. Let's make this a bit bigger because this is a more interesting event. Okay, now there are many other things that we can put here in the middle, but in the first round, all we want to do is reach the end. So we have this, the user created a dinner and a guest reserved a spot in the dinner. The next thing we want to do is the flow of the guest actually arriving at the dinner and paying and so on. Okay, so let's imagine the flow of the dinner. So let's say that when the host wants to start the dinner, then he opens the app and he has a button of start dinner. He clicks this button, then the dinner officially starts. And let's say he has there some QR code. And then when the guests arrive, then all they need to do is scan this QR code. They're prompted to pay for the dinner. They pay for the dinner and then they can enter and enjoy their meal. And when the dinner ends, then the host simply clicks the end dinner button and that's it. Okay, so let's model that part. So we have over here, the dinner started. Like we said, this is initiated by the host, right? So we have the host sending the start dinner command, right? So start dinner command. This is invoked on some system, let's say the dinner system. And then we have the event of dinner started. Okay, so the dinner started, but let's say that when the user actually clicks the button and starts the dinner, then we want to notify the guests. So let's say that over here we have some policy. Let's say that it's the dinner started policy. And when this happens, then we want to invoke the command of, let's say, notify guests. And this is invoked, again, let's say on the email system, right? So something like this. Then this results in the command of notification email sent. And the read model over here is whatever, the dinner details and maybe the reservation details, right? let's say something like this. Okay, now I just want to note that if you're doing this alone and for you it's easier to write shorter sentences, then go ahead and do that. This is only for you to have a clear vision of what's happening, what the process is like. This obviously doesn't compile, so it doesn't matter how you write this or what you do, as long as you're consistent and you understand what's actually happening. Okay, so like we said, we have the host, they click the start dinner button in the app, and this results in all the guests being notified that the dinner has started. But like we said, also the host receives a QR code that arriving guests can now scan the QR code and enter the dinner or pay for the dinner and then enter. So what we have over here is a QR code as well. This QR code is observed by the guest. And when the guest scans it, then let's say that the command that is invoked is, I don't know, guest arrived. And this is invoked on some system let's say it's invoked on our dinner system. This results in the guest arrived domain event, which results in the prompt payment view to the user. So let's say over here, prompt payment. Then the user has this prompt payment 
And what they do is they say, okay, I thought there was a baby emergency, but everything is okay, so we're back. So again, what we have is the guest approves the payment. This approvement is invoked on the dinner system, and this results in the payment approved domain event. And we might have some policy that when the payment is approved, then we actually want to bill the guest. So we might have over here the payment approved policy that when this happens, then we have the command that is bill guest, different than bill gates, that's something else. And this is invoked this time on the payment system. And this results in the guest build event, right? Great. So this is two of these, right? So we have the guest arrived, which is over here. We have the guest build, which is over here. Okay. The last thing we might have over here is we have some confirmation number or just a notification that the payment was successful to the client. So what we might have over here is the receipt and also some confirmation, right? Okay, so it's starting to look good. We have the host creating a dinner. We have a guest reserving a spot to the dinner. We have the dinner starting. We have the guest arriving and then being billed. And we still have the host actually ending the dinner. So for this, let's imagine that the host simply clicks the end dinner button on the app. So for that, we have, let's go over here. We have the host invoking the end dinner command, right? And this is invoked on our dinner system. And this results in the dinner ended. And let's say when the dinner ends, then we have some policy that is dinner ended policy. And the policy states that when the dinner ended, then we check if everyone that reserved a spot to the dinner actually arrived at the dinner. And if they didn't arrive, then maybe there's something we want to do. Maybe we want to charge them for half of the price of the dinner. I don't know. And if they arrived, maybe you want to send them a questionnaire, ask them how the dinner was, how the menu was, maybe to review the host, something like that. So let's imagine we have this and this invokes a few commands. So we have, let's say, check attendance right? And so on. You get the idea. Okay, so let's stop here for now. Okay, so taking a step back and looking at what we have, then this is a great start. And now it's much easier to see what actually happens, what the flow is, what interesting events are in our system. I also want to take the opportunity and thank all my patrons. I really, really appreciate it. It's hard to believe that so many of you are encouraging me to continue. What I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the full process modeling diagram, what I actually use before implementing the service. And I really hope it's going to be educational and help you understand the concept better. I put a sneak peek of it over here. I really hope you enjoy it. So let's continue. If you're familiar with DDD, then I want you to stop the urge of imagining the different aggregates and the methods on these aggregates and whose responsibility it is for each one of these domain events and these commands and so on. That's because at this stage, all we want to do is we want to map everything, the entire process, all the questions that are unanswered, then we want to map them over here, either put a hotspot or actually investigate it and see the entire flow. And the reason why you don't want to do this completely alone is because I'm not a domain expert in this area. And my wife, which is luckily also a software engineer and also an amazing cook, then I showed her my design and what I thought about it. And she told me that as a host, then what she would want to do is probably to create a couple of menus and create many dinners around these menus. Okay, and that for me changed everything in the way I looked at it because I understood that me as a guest looking at dinners, then I would actually really want to look at the menu and see what the reviews are for that specific menu. So if a host is creating multiple dinners on the same menu, then it makes sense that when the dinner ends, the questionnaire isn't actually on the dinner, but it's on the menu itself that's saved to the menu and then that's what the host has. Okay, and this is something that you can only imagine if you start writing code before you do this kind of process, what's going to happen, right? So you might understand that you have completely, completely different entities, the relationships are different, the responsibilities are different. That's why I think this is critical to do before starting anything, just modeling the entire problem space 
and the entire domain. Okay, what we're going to do in the next video is if you're not familiar with domain driven design, then don't worry. Finally, we're going to learn about aggregates, about entities, about value objects. We're going to understand what the different relationships are between them, some rules of thumb when designing to understand how to actually model our application. I urge you, if you are familiar with domain driven design, then try to model this thing before you watch the next video and try to imagine how to do this. This is a complicated example. This isn't a to-do list or a shopping cart. We have many relationships. Again, we have the menu, we have the dinner, we have the guest, we have the host, we have maybe the bill for the entire thing, right? There are many different entities here. So if that sounds intriguing and you're ready to dive deep into domain-driven design, then make sure to smash that subscribe button and the like button, and I'll see you in the next one.